Hey everybody, welcome to Pack One Pick One, number 206 on the Mandalik. I am John, as always, currently in Victoria, British Columbia. Although, of course, this video was recorded last week. Shh, don't tell anybody. We are going to open our second last pick, our second last pack of Corset 2020 here. See what's in it and discuss what we would take, pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Now, if you go over to patreon.com slash shamanalik and you become a $5 backer or above, I'm not going to stop you from giving me more if you want. You get your chance to get all the cards out of this pack each week, or none, or whatever you happen to want, and this week that honor is going to Daniel M. So let's crack this open, see what we have, and see what we would take, pack one, pick one. Starting up, we've got ourselves an Octoprofit. Octoprofit is three in a blue for a creature octopus. It's a 3 3 when it ETPs you scry two. It's fine. It's fine. There's not much else to say other than it's fine. It's not first pickable, though. But I like my little uh, eight armed buddy there. Scorch Spitter is up next. Scorch Spitter is one single red mana for a 1 1 creature elemental lizard. When it attacks, it deals one damage to uh, the player or planeswalker that it's attacking. This is a fine aggressive card if you are going to go into like that solid mono red deck. And obviously, it does get some synergy with uh, Chandra's Spitfire and even with Goblin Smuggler. And it's an elemental. All of that makes this card whatever a, a quarter step below fine is i guess it's not good you're never first picking this and you're actually cutting it a fair bit but in certain situations it is surprisingly shockingly slightly less than fine up next is steadfast sentry steadfast sentry is two and a white for a creature human soldier it's a three two with vigilance when it dies you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control it's a fine card if white was a better color then this card would be uh, uh somewhat glueish you would want you know a couple of these to fill out your deck they wouldn't be 23rd cards they'd be more like 21st cards but as is we're not first picking this and we're trying to not get into white at least not for this card up next is Sage's Row Denizen. Sage's Row Denizen is two and a blue for a creature Vidalcan Wizard. It's a 2-3. Whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, target player, it could be you, it's not going to be you, puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. This card's fine if you uh, can go deep on it, which you can on Arena because the uh, the bots don't pick this. It goes like pick eight or pick nine on average, says the, the uh, widely available data out there. But in the real world, you're probably not quite going to go off with this. And two cards at a time inconsistently is not a clock. You will die to your opponent punching you in the face before you actually successfully mill them out. It is a filler creature, though. I will still play this if I need a 23rd creature, but it is not a first pick. Up next is Epicure of Blood. Epicure of Blood is four and a black for a creature. Vampire, it's a 4-4. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Nope, not interested. The black, uh, uh, the uncommon life gain payoff card, Bloodthirst, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, whatever the Aerialist is, is uh, much better than this. I don't want to play this card. Even if I have a life gain, I don't really want to play this card. Up next is Boneclad Necromancer. Boneclad Necromancer is three black black for a creature human wizard. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When it ETBs, you can exile a creature from any graveyard. If you do, you make a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. This card's okay, but unfortunately, the floor is unplayable. If you play this as a 5-mana 3-3, three, three, it's awful. Luckily, generally, when you're playing a 5-drop, you are going to have a creature to choose from, be it yours or your opponent's. And so if it is a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2, two, two, it's okay, but it's not any better than okay. So not a first pick, but it will typically make your deck unless your deck is actually super good. Up next is Undead Servant. Undead Servant is three and a black for a creature zombie. It's a three two. When it ETBs, you put a two two zombie, or you create a two two zombie token for each copy of Undead Servant that is in your graveyard. This is way too hard to go off with. I've seen people try. I've seen them fail. I've seen it happen once or twice, sure, but it's super inconsistent. You just don't really get to choose if this is going to make a bunch of zombies or no zombies. So I'm not really a, a fan of Undead Servant. I'm not going to collect them. No interest in it. Certainly not a first pick and not really playable. 
Well, we have a first pick in the real world here with pacifism. Pacifism is one and a white for an enchantment or enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. It is amazing removal in many sets. This would be one of the premier first pick non-rares. In this set, because white is a little bit underpowered, it's uh, uh, not quite as good. If you are drafting on MTGO or in paper, especially in paper where you are drafting within a pod and playing within a pod, it's totally fine to go white. You can get a very powerful deck, especially if people are avoiding it. But on Arena, it's uh, significantly more of a problem because everybody's going to have overpowered, not white decks, and you're going to have, at best, maybe an overpowered white deck, which doesn't really compare. So real-world pacifism is certainly a first-pick card here. Dawning Angel is up next. Dawning Angel is four and away for a creature angel. It's a 3-2 flyer. When Dawning Angel enters the battlefield, you gain four life. This is another pretty solid white card if you do get into the white deck. It obviously shines in the blue-white flyers deck if your eagles are making this a 4-3 or something like that, or if it's cheaper from your Warden of Evos Isles. It's not really a first pick, uh, even in the real world or MTGO, but it's a fine, fine, fine card. We are on to our uncommons, which means we have a foil. Pattern Matcher. Pattern Matcher is four generic mana for an artifact creature golem. It's a 3-3 three, three, when it ETBs. You could go search your library, and you can grab a copy of a creature that you already have on the battlefield. Pattern Matcher is solid if you have at least one pair. Obviously, if you have none, it's not that very good. Um, but if you have multiple pairs or, or multiple very good creatures, this can be fantastic. I have gotten Risen Reefs off of this and Cloudkin Sears, and it's been incredible. Uh, a, a solid pick once you have gotten down that uh, sort of path, but I'm not a fan of taking this before I'm there and never a first pick. Our next uncommon is Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer is a single green mana for an instant. Uh, it does a lot. There's a there's a paragraph here. You get to draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and black until the end of this turn. A solid, solid, solid sideboard card. You obviously don't main deck this, but if you are playing against blue or black or blue and black, this is great to come on in because you will at least draw a card, hopefully, or you will stop a spell from being countered or you will stop a creature from being killed or something like that. Solid, solid card. Just remember it's hexproof and not protection. I've definitely played this thinking that it was protection when I wanted a creature to not die in combat and it didn't work. Our final uncommon is Vengeful Warchief. Vengeful Warchief is four and a black for a creature orc warrior. It's a four four. Whenever you lose life for the first time each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Vengeful Warchief. A five mana four four is not good. It is not playable. And uh, getting counters on this is not easy. It's not something that you can just snap your fingers and have happen. So there's too much to go into this to make this actually playable for me to ever really care about playing this card. And because I never look to take this card until very late in the pack, I just never see it. But you should never see it either because you should never pick it. Our rare... And remember, we have a foil as well. Our rare is Leyline of Abundance. Leyline of Abundance is two green green for an enchantment. Uh, if it's in your opening hand, of course, you just get to play it for free before the game begins. Whenever you tap a creature for a mana, add an additional green. Pay six green green. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This isn't that good. The ley lines, none of the ley lines are really any good, even out of the sideboard. Um, this one, there's only like the one creature, maybe two, that can actually tap for mana. There's the Ember Cat and the Leafkin Druid. Uh, so you're probably not going to be getting too much extra value out of this. And having eight mana to start putting counters on everything, the game should be over by that point, even though this format can be a little bit slow. Uh, there's no real place for ley line, unfortunately, so I'm never looking at first picking it or ever picking it or playing it our foil is a retributive wand retributive wand is three generic mana for an artifact pay three tap it deals one damage to any target when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield it deals five damage to any target there's some cute things you can do with this, with this of course with destructive digger or if you're desperate you could play reckless airstrike or something but that is way too cute way too shenanigan e and uh, just not what I'm looking to do. I'm never first picking or playing a Retributive Wand, but it looks kind of nifty in foil. Very shiny there. We have an Evolving Wilds, which arguably could uh, compete depending on where we're drafting if we really want to stay out of white, but I don't think it does. I think this is a very clear pacifism out of this pack. Um, this pack wasn't great. We had a sideboard card in the Uncommon, and we had the, uh, the Pattern Matcher. Uh, yeah, somewhat of a weak 
pack here. I think we take the pacifism, feel good about it, and make the person that we're passing to just feel awful about what their pick two is going to be. Anyways, let me know what you have taken in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. You can find me at patreon.com slash manaleek if you want to become a backer at the $5 level or above and get your chance of getting all the cards out of the pack like Daniel did this week. If you go over to inksgaming.com, you can use the promo code manaleek10, all one word, one zero is the number to get 10% off your order and help the channel out. And of course, the easiest way, the quickest way, the cheapest way thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already but if you do have questions comments or suggestions let me know otherwise see y'all next time